In this video, I'm gonna show you how this ingenious device helps me put out wildfires with an A-Star helicopter. Hi, I'm Rick James from The Pilot Teacher, and today we're gonna to be talking about and showing you how I set up a water bucket, also known as a Bambi bucket, to use on fighting wildfires. It's an awesome piece of technology, and without it, wildfires would just be running rampant throughout the country. There's all different sizes of Bambi buckets, so today I'm gonna to show you how I set it up on the A-Star. So this is the 1821 water bucket or Bambi bucket from SEI Industries in Canada. And it's an awesome, awesome device. This one has a capacity of about 216 gallons when it's full, uh, which is about 820 liters. When it's at full weight, this thing weighs just over 2,100 pounds, which is just under a thousand kilograms. Um, so for the A-Star, it is perfect. The cool thing about the Bambi bucket range is they are dozens and dozens of Bambi buckets, all ranging in different sizes to accommodate the different size helicopters that we use on fires. And the biggest one they do is just under 2,600 gallons. That's a monster. So it's about 9,800 liters. Um, when that thing picks up, it's gonna weigh close to 22,000 pounds or 10,000 kilos. So, you know, those are the Bambi buckets for the Chinooks, just monsters. Um, you can see this picture here of when I was at Columbia Helicopters in Oregon uh, during my flight school days. I'm stood next to one of their water buckets. <laughs> it's definitely a lot bigger than this one. It's a monster, but it's all designed to get water from a dip site onto the fire as efficiently as possible and the technology that's coming out in fire buckets is is constantly evolving you can put foam in them some have snorkels on them that can sit into shallow water and suck up water using a pump um, they've got multiple drops this one is just a, a single drop so when i push the button all the water comes out in one go but there's ones that have got like a computer controlled release mechanism so you can do multiple drops or you can slow how much water is released so you can do a long dispersal pattern with it um, just phenomenal what SEI Industries is doing with their Bambi buckets so some pilots and some companies prefer to put the Bambi bucket directly onto the belly hook on the A-Star and I personally don't like to do that. My company that I fly for doesn't like to do that just because then the belly, uh, the, the Bambi bucket sits right close to the front of the aircraft when landing. Um, what I prefer and what our company prefers is to put it on the end of a 125 foot long line for the A-Star. Um, this is more, especially if you're fighting fires in areas where there's trees and you've got to get your bucket down into a dip site that's down in the trees or you're in mountainous terrain where you want to get the helicopter positioned over a fire and if the bucket is connected to the belly um, you might not be able to get low enough to have get the water have any effect because if you're too high and you drop it the water just kind of spreads out and it comes at like a light rain whereas if you can get the bucket right over the top of the tree that's burning and dump it off you get you know 200 gallons of water dumping straight over that tree so that tree is is extinguished it's gone out but if it's too high and you can't get down because of trees or the mountainous terrain um, that's where a long line comes in so let's go get it set up So now the line's set up at the side of the aircraft, I like to lay my line out in nice open loops. That way when I go to lift the aircraft up, it's not gonna get snagged on anything. This is especially important if you're out in the bush and uh, there's a lot of snags and tree stumps and things like that on the ground. So you have to just set it all out nice and neatly. So now I'm gonna go and connect it to the aircraft 
and make sure the mechanical and electrical release mechanisms work so that in the event of emergency I can punch this long line off and fly away safely. So here we are under the aircraft and on the A-Stars especially we have this thing called a cargo swing and it's basically just attached to four points on the aircraft structure. Um, it helps to spread the load a bit. Um, I don't know why they do it to be honest. They obviously do it for a reason but that's beyond my pay scale so um, here we have the hook. We just have bungee cords here and this just stops the hook from rattling around when we're in flight and we're not using it. So the hook is a electrical mechanical release device and I can basically release it mechanically using the uh, bicycle brake as we call it on the collective which you can see here. As I pull on it, it releases the hook mechanically and that's done just through this cable coming down here and it's directly linked to the bicycle brake. The other way is by pressing the cargo hook release button on the cyclic and that then also releases this mechanically. So it gives me two ways to release the hook in the event of an emergency. Uh, so what we do is we just connect it up, give it a good few tugs to make sure that it doesn't come off and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to test each system three times. So now that I know that the uh, hook works, I can now connect up the electrical side. And the electrical side is so that I can electrically operate the water bucket to drop the water with the push of a button. And what I do here is I just put two loops of electrical tape around it just to prevent it accidentally coming apart whilst I'm flying because then you've got to land sort it out and it just wastes time so two loops around it it's just enough if i have to punch the hook off it'll just pull the uh, connector apart but it's just enough just to keep it in place during the flight so now i've got the long line sorted it's time to get the bucket unpacked get it inspected and get it ready for operation So as you can see, water buckets are pretty big, even though this one's uh, one of the smaller ones, it still comes up to waist height to me, and there's a lot of water. So the water bucket has multiple parts. It has this spreader here, which keeps the bucket inflated when there's no water in it. If it uh, doesn't stay inflated, we can't get it full of water when we get to the dip site. The brown thing you see right here is a sandbag. And what that does is it allows the bucket to tip over. Once we get it into the water, it pulls the bucket over. So it allows it to fill faster. So in the bottom of the bucket there, we have the udder. And that is held up by these laces, which connect to this line here. This line goes down with all the other lines down into the head. And the head basically has a solenoid inside it. So here is the, uh, the release. So at the moment it's locked, but when I press the button to release the water, this fully unlocks and it allows one of these lines that are all connected to the udder here to be released and the pressure of the water pushes the order from this way to that way and it opens up. So that's how basically the Bambi bucket works. When I've released the water, that solenoid back up in the head is spring loaded. So it pulls the lines back 
locks it in place so that when I go to dip water again, the udder is sealed and the bucket fills. And that is, it's as simple as that. It's literally press the button, releases the udder, water comes out, spring loads back, allows the bucket to be reset and refilled. Um, in here, we've got this, this black strap all the way around and that's called a cinch strap. And what that allows me to do is to adjust how much water this bucket can fill up. So I can have it at 100%, 90, 80, 70, and I think 60% is the smallest um, capacity that it can cinch down to. So most of the time when I am on a fire, I'll fill the aircraft up to about 80% fuel and 80% cinch. At 80% cinch, this bucket will weigh 1,500 pounds when it's full. So it, that allows me to have a bit of an excess power margin. And especially when you're fighting fires when it's hot and if you're altitude, by cinching down, it allows you to take a little less water and a bit more fuel. So it's always a compromise between water and fuel. Those are the two variables that you can uh, remove to stay under your max gross takeoff weight with an external load. So 80% fuel, 80% cinch, gives me about two hours of uh, water bucket in before I need to go back for fuel. And it allows me a good power margin so I'm not getting close to my limits and potentially over torquing the machine. So on the bottom of the water bucket, we have a big steel or galvanized steel heavy chain. And what that does is it helps to weight the bucket down into the water and allow it to sink and it also allows the bucket to have some weight to it so when I'm flying back and forth with no water in the bucket it stays heavy um, so that it drags behind the helicopter and doesn't fly up into the you know, catch wind and fly up into the tail rotor uh, which would be a really really bad day so the chain is to give it weight and then the black straps are basically just to suspend the bucket on the lines that all connect to the head. So now we're going to go and connect the line to the head and get that all secure. So the first thing I want to do is I want to make sure that the electrical connection works. So I'm going to plug this in, I'm going to go over to the aircraft, press the release button and I'm waiting to hear the solenoid click in the head. Um, usually if I'm around I will get another pilot or another engineer um, or somebody else to just pull on the solenoid just to make sure it fully extends. If I'm by myself, I'll put the bucket right next to the helicopter so that I can have the head on my lap when I press the button and I can test it myself. But for today, I'm just going to listen for the click. So now I know that, that works good, same thing as before, I'm just going to go and put two reps around the connector just to keep it in place. So now I know that the electrical connection is good, it's time to connect the line to the head. junior pilot or a new pilot ask for some form of leatherman or multi-tool for your birthday or Christmas you will use it all the time as a pilot and what I want to do now to make sure that this is completely secure is I'm going to lock wire the bolt of the shackle in place because as you're flying along and the lines doing this over time it could unwind the shackle uh, or the bolt out of the shackle so I want to lock wire this and make sure that it's not going to come undone. Some people use a zip tie for this, um, it all depends on what you've got. If I'm out in the bush and I don't have lock wire, 
then you betcha I'm using a zip tie. But you always want to just have something to make sure that the bolt on this shackle and the bolt on this shackle isn't going to come undone. And that is it guys. That is how we get a fire bucket ready. The only thing left to do now is to put the bucket away from the aircraft so that when I lift off, my line is gonna be lifting up nicely and then I'll get the aircraft right over the bucket and then off we'll go to the fire. And that is how helicopters use Bambi buckets or water buckets to put out a fire. I hope you enjoyed this. Hope it uh, answered some questions that you may have had when you see helicopters flying around fighting fires. Uh, this is how we do it. Um, I enjoyed making this. I love doing this kind of stuff. So if you uh, like this kind of thing, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. I have new videos like this coming out all the time, just showing you guys what I get up to on a daily basis as a helicopter pilot. Um, if you liked it, give that like button a smash. It really helps the channel. If you've got any questions or comments about this, the fire bucket or the helicopter in general or anything aviation, stick them in the comments below. Um, I love reading your comments. You give me the inspiration to get the camera out and film things that you want answers to. So yeah, I love doing it. If you enjoyed watching it, that's awesome. I've got some other videos that you can find right here that uh, I hope you'll find informative and entertaining too. And if so, I'll see you on the next one.